Joining me now is somebody who's done a lot of thinking about a lot of these questions. Ben Smith is the editor-in-chief at Semaphore. So I wanted to start, Ben. You tweeted your own reaction uh, to the AI Trump voice ad, saying, quote, the real use of AI this campaign cycle will be to attempt to, does anyone care here, get mainstream media attention regarding the devious use of AI. How is my voice for you there? I mean, I this get... was, that was great, and I'm glad you're reading my tweets. <laughs> so my question really... human generated, and it's working. Here we are talking here about we are Ron talking DeSantis about it. AI ad. Well, I wanted to ask you about that, because for a lot of people, it feels like AI is going to be a huge threat. Disinfo, it's going to confuse everybody. And, you know, we were all a little bit traumatized by 2016. Yep. But that tweet made, made it sound to me like you think it's a little bit overcranked. I mean, I think when these there's these hype cycles where new technologies come in, no doubt there will be all sorts of genuinely disturbing and weird and bad stuff and interesting and inspiring and good stuff. But the first thing that happens is that journalists get obsessed with it, campaigns know we're obsessed with it, and they start doing stupid stuff like that to get our attention and succeed it. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you about kind of how you're going to deal or how media in your assessment is going to deal with how campaigns use it. So, for example, uh, the mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez, he's not exactly a leading contender on the Republican side at this point. But regardless of that, he launched an artificial intelligence chat bot to answer questions about him. And he, they put out an advisory to the press yeah. about that. Uh, one, do you think others will follow? Is that just a shtick on his part? What's your assessment? Yeah, I mean, this is a thing no one wants, right? Yeah. Like, you could probably, you or I could probably get him on, like, we could probably just text him. I'm not sure if he's that busy. <laughs> right. Um, we could call him now. Yeah, so, so that, I mean, and I think a lot of campaigns and just businesses and people are, are genuinely feeling right for what are, like, interesting, useful, genuine use cases, mm -hmm. of which... A chatbot with Mayor Suarez is not, but it's kind of maybe, maybe there's some, maybe the citizens of Miami could use it for something. Um, but, I, but I think for journalists, I think the, in a way, I'm a, actually less worried about people being tricked by a video of Joe Biden the public, falling off the mean. stage, the public in general. Yeah. Like, I think there are pretty good antibodies to that. I think if I saw, I think already if people saw a video of Donald Trump or Joe Biden doing something weird, they would be a little suspicious and they would probably turn to you or to me You or might be a else. little bit more optimistic I about think, the public, but... But I do think that, in a way, that's also the bad thing. People see a video of anything, and I think increasingly, and will be, and will wonder if it's real. Yeah. And I actually think in some ways the scariest sort of consequence of this, the immediate consequence, isn't going to be the deceptive video. It's going to be the it's going to be the opportunity to deny real videos and to say that oh, that's all fake. It's I mean, all imagine, confusing. I mean, the imagine, fake news argument. Yeah, imagine if that um, if that you know obscene Donald Trump tape that almost, that sort of rocked the 2016 election that fall came out now. I think there he would probably say that's manipulated audio. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do that, or he could say that, and I think we would have to say, like I don't know, is it like we'll have to really run down the provenance and for journalists. Figuring out the exact provenance of these things is going to be very because it's very hard to assess, yeah. right? If it's real, if it's if it's manipulated, yeah. how it's generated. I did want to ask you about the impact on media um, because Google announced they're developing an AI tool that is able to write news articles. I mean, you've been a journalist for decades yeah. now; you've covered media for years. Do you think others will follow? And what impact do you think that could have? I mean, I think it's going to have. I think there's a whole cascade of impacts into media because in a way, you know, the thing they're building are language models. We're in the language business. Mm -hmm. So it's this very direct impact on media. I think in, in kind of unpredictable ways, some negative, some positive. I think for the, the first is that a lot of media businesses rely on search. And if Google switches from a world, and a lot of them are really freaking out about this, switches from a world where you search and you click on a link to the New York Times or to Semaphore, I hope, to a world where you ask a chatbot a question, and it gives you an answer, and doesn't tell you how it knows it, and doesn't even know how it knows yeah. it. Yeah, I mean that's a that could, that's a huge threat to lots of media businesses, lots of journalism business, and there's a very intense conversation going on now between these companies and the platforms. You know, aim from our perspective at keeping journalists employed, essentially. In in that it will impact journalists yeah, being employed. Yeah, just in a very direct kind of threat to the business. I think the consequences for the for the job of journalism are more complicated, kind of interesting. I mean, I think there's this, you know, there was, before the 70s, 80s, journalism was not a profession where you needed a college degree, where you needed a great writer, to be a, to be a slick writer. If you, look, if you watch the old movies, you know, often what happens is a great hustling reporter gets some piece of information, picks up the phone, says, get me rewrite. Mm -hmm. That kind of got erased over the last few decades. And it actually, that actually narrowed who got into journalism, homogenized journalism. And I think if there are tools that can help a more diverse array of people 
take the facts that they can gather and the insights they have and write them a little better. Like, I think that's great. But do you think for people who are journalist major, journalism majors in college or graduate school, I mean, you're yeah. established, right, in your, in your world and in your industry. Right. And they want to get into the industry. They want to be an entry-level writer at uh, Wire Service. Are they, should they be concerned? I mean, are their jobs at risk? I mean, I think that what is valuable will change. I mean, it used to actually be a good, I mean, I, I think I still know one journalist who got into the business through the printing plan, press. Mm -hmm. You know, people started out printing at mm -hmm. some point in, in this business. I think a lot of production has been eaten away by technology. But I mean, to me, the core of the job is the reporting, is like going out and getting new information that is not yet on the internet, that isn't there to be ingested by, an AI, by AI. And I guess I have, and, if, and I, that's, I think that's what I would tell journalists to get really good at that. Because writing, sort of doing OK writing is, is, is a diminishingly valuable skill, for sure. So there's been a lot of fear about this. Yeah. What do you think, how, how do you use AI as you are reporting? Uh, and how do, how do you think journalists can use it for good? I mean, I basically just ask it what I should say when I go on TV and <laughs> memorize it and come <laughs> on and say that. You could have sent your um, chatbot, like Mayor Suarez. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, honestly, I think there are a lot of, I think a lot of its easiest and most obvious use cases are at kind of the most technical end of journalism. The, um, you know, copy editing, things like that, I think, the, that's a job that's really endangered by this. But I, and, and that's a real thing. Economic disruption is a real thing. But I don't think anybody thinks Grammarly is going to you know, have robots patrolling the street corners shouting. Which Russian is an online tool to go through and yeah. check grammar, right? Yeah, like yes. I think there's, there's a lot of that. And then I think the other place that in our business is really interesting is um, lowering the cost of video production in mm. particular. These tools democratize the animation and things like that in a way that, on one hand, maybe a threat is, is a threat, I think, to the jobs of some animators. On the other hand, means organizations like ours can do really ambitious a animation projects we could never have afforded before. Ben Smith, always a pleasure. I'm glad you didn't send your uh, chat chat partner uh, to speak with me, and you <laughs> came you, in person. How does anyone even know? How does anyone even know? I think I have a good sense. Uh